good day again. Prodota, we play, we're sitting with Admiral Baldock. Say hello to Prodota. Привет, uh, Russian community Prodota. You told you had a month boot camp. Uh, where was it? Uh, it was in uh, Sweden, Stockholm, in our capital. And uh, yeah, it was in a, an apartment uh, one month before. Okay. Uh, can you tell some funny occasions that happened during boot camp? Um, hmm. Well, uh, usually at the end of every day, <coughs> after we scrimmed, uh, we always watched uh, movies, and we usually ended up uh, watching horror movies because it's really uh, at night and it's it's dark and all that. And uh, every movie we watch, as four, he he becomes like a girl. He screams like a little girl. It's really funny to uh, watch horror movies with him. And uh, was Kelly there? She was, and uh, also Aki's uh, girlfriend was there in Burmi sometimes. Okay, so you had like girl support. Yeah. Were, were they screaming with horror movies? <laughs> well, not as much as S4. <laughs> he, he was the true girl there. <laughs> we touched that topic. Let's talk about the girl support. Uh, first of all, uh, what can you say about Ukraine? Because in our community there was a very hot topic about some of your relationship with one of the journalists at Starladder. Can you describe what happened? <laughs> I, I don't know, I haven't read this topic, so I'm not sure what it's about, but uh, a journalist, no, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, I don't yeah. think. That. But, like, you know, in football there are a bunch of girls mm -hmm. that, like, serves professional players, you know, to relax. Yeah. Do you think uh, Dota players, like Dota clubs, organizations need such girls? Yeah, of course, we need girls to please us. Why wouldn't we? Uh, you know, before a game, we're stressed. We need some girls. Of course, that's why Ukraine is the best because they uh, that's the best girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, like in Sweden, girls are less pretty, or just they are more like complex. Yeah, I mean, they're not as pretty. I mean, many people say that the Swedish girls are the most beautiful, but no, it's it's the Ukrainian and the Russians that are the the best. Uh, and you know, Swedish girls, they're they're not gamers. They don't do that stuff, but the Ukrainian and Russian do. They play a lot of games, the girls, and it's really fun. And uh, not in Ukraine. Did you have? Did you ever have something with say, like fans, like girl fans, uh, maybe in China? In China? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not easy to get the Chinese girls. They're they're not really that into foreigners. That I, I think at least <laughs> EGM got a couple maybe. I don't know. <laughs> like the girls like to take pictures with them. I was a bit jealous to be honest. <laughs> uh, but in Sweden, was there some like fan that approached you and then it happened? <laughs> uh, no, not with girls at least. There were some guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's come back to your trainings. Uh, don't you think you train too much? Because usual sportsmen, they don't train like that. They have lots of breaks. Well, we don't really train that much. A normal day uh, at the boot camp was like I woke up at 9, uh, played some pubs or or watched some uh, movie or something like that. Uh, and then we started screaming at like 5 maybe mm -hmm. uh, until midnight so it is nine hours but there's breaks between and there's a lot of dead time like yeah you play uh, Fnatic three times then you have to find new opponents you have to wait like 40 minutes maybe so overall uh, we practice like six hours a day and it's it's enough you, you don't stress out from it it's it's fine doing that and uh, we also have like one break every week you said you were increasing when you played like solo without team. You were increasing your hero pool. So what were the heroes? <laughs> well, uh, I don't want to re reveal too much, but you know, uh, the hero pool isn't really a problem. I mean, I play a few uh, heroes a lot, like Lone Druid and Furion, and it, it's good because people feel like they need to ban it, and it, it opens up our uh, other heroes a lot, but. Uh, other than those two, I, you know, I played a lot of Bunty and Clock and um, uh, what's that a hero? I don't even remember. But <laughs> uh, we've practiced a bit with Doom as well, uh -huh. offline. And usually, Loda plays Doom. By the way, where is the legendary Doom by Loda? Uh, well, we stopped using it actually because him as safe lane, it's it's usually not worth it. Doom doesn't even need farm 
to, all he needs to do is use his ult on enemy carry and that here is useless. You don't need farm to do that, really. Sweden, I know that Dota will be shown on TV. Yes. Uh, what do you think about that and like, how is it possible actually? Do you know some background? Well, I don't really know the background, it's just that I think a lot of it has to do with uh, that there's an all Swedish team here. Um, us, of course, uh, and there are some other Swedish people like Pycat and uh, Era. So I, I think that's a big reason to why they uh, will show it. But you know, it's really great for us and for esport overall because it helps esport grow a lot. So it's it's really good that it's happening. Uh, you told that you lost your luggage while traveling here. Uh, so how was it like? I mean. Were you wearing the pants of your teammates, or how did you survive without that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I had to borrow S Force underwear, <laughs> and they're really tiny. <laughs> it was really bad, <laughs> and I had to use his socks. And well, his clothes are really ugly, so it was really bad actually. <laughs> but now you got everything back, or yeah, I got it after like uh, one or two days after coming here, so it was, it was pretty good. And did they give you like compensation, like money? No, they didn't. But when um, when we went here from uh, Sweden, we went to Amsterdam, and that flight was overbooked. Yeah. So so we got compensation from that. And then you returned to Iceland, or yeah, yeah, yeah I know that story. Yeah, it was awful. Uh, when you started to play the bear, like a long time ago, was the aim uh, to become a professional player, or it was just like for fun and to, you just like the hero? Well, I mean, it was just because I love the hero and. My goal was because um, I wanted to be as good as humanly possible. So you know, to to be improved, you have to play all the time. And I played it all the time. I played no other hero, but but Londred, and you know, then I met Dendi, and that's how it all started. Aren't you tired of uh, those three heroes? I know that yeah, it's effective and everything, but personally, you aren't you tired? Uh, no, <laughs> I love these heroes. I can play them. I mean, if these heroes help me win a uh, million dollars, uh, they do not bore me. If anything, they make me happy to play them. So I'll just keep playing them. I mean, I get new skins as well, and maybe there's something in the works for uh, Lone Druid's bear that we're working on, maybe. maybe. Have you ever met a bear in real life? Uh, no, I, I wish I have. Uh, I've seen some funny videos on it, though, bears. I really love bears. But uh, in Sweden, as I know, it's like a northern country, you can meet a bear in, in the forest, for example, right? I don't actually know if there are any bears in Sweden. I don't think so, actually. Maybe, maybe very few, but I don't think there are any. What do you think is the top age for a cyber sportsman? I don't think there is a limit. I think the reason we don't see any like 40-year-old right now is because when they were kids, they didn't play. I mean, there weren't any esport at that time. So, as people grow up now, uh, esport is as well. So, I mean, in 40 years, there's going to probably be like 50 year old guys playing, being professional, living off it for sure. What were you dreaming when you were a kid, and what are you dreaming now? Uh, well, as a kid, um, so I think I wanted to be a police when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then as I grew up, now, I had a passion for gaming all my life, so it has always been a dream to be able to live off what you love. So I always wanted to uh, be a professional gamer, and uh, it uh, it went through. I was lucky. Do you have like a police suit so you can arrest Windrunner? <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I had that. <laughs> what was the brightest event in your life? Uh, I think it, it was the most fun event I went to. It's probably. So far, Stalin. I, I really like going to Ukraine and Kiev. It's really nice there. I mean, so far here, it's it's really good as well. But there's some charm to uh, Stalin, I think. Did you make some actions uh, to uh, make Dota 2 more profitable? And personally, I haven't. I just go with the flow, but hopefully things like that are happening. So, Because right now, a pro player can't really live off his, uh, of his gaming. Uh, you don't you don't get enough money, especially it depends where you live. Like if you live in Sweden, it's it's really expensive there. And I mean, if you live in uh, Ukraine, I think you could probably live off it if you're a top player. But not in Sweden, so hopefully, uh, just, uh, everyone gets a steady salary. It's probably the most important thing, and I hope that happens. 
how many trainings with the team is enough as you think to to be in shape you just got to play a lot that's basically how it works and i think uh, sometimes really important is be too versatile like if you want to be successful you you need to have a hero pool that's not too large and uh, you just got to practice a set amount of heroes and a play style that that fits you that's that's really how you have to do it because some some teams change their way of playing and i think it hurts them a lot especially in a tournament like like this at ti3 some teams feel uh, necessary to change uh heroes and stuff like that because other teams are using it and then you know weaver is popular all of a sudden so some teams feel like it's necessary to pick it early and maybe they don't play much weaver and it's it's probably going to hurt them what place at the international will you consider as not a failure uh one <laughs> no, but uh i think if we get second or first that's good but anything below that i would be well not unhappy but i would want more than that eric johnson told that when people like dota players are treated like royalty you know that's like they should be treated. Do you agree with him, or maybe Dota players are not so like royalty? Or well, we're not royalty. We're just people like everyone else. But it it is nice to be treated uh, special because you're really good at doing something like uh, football players and stuff like that. So you know, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Philosophy question. I ask it every player. So, what's the point of Dota? Uh, the point of Dota is uh, to be the very best, like no one ever was. Do you miss a ladder system in matchmaking of Dota 2? Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I wish it was some kind of ladder. Um, it doesn't really affect me so much because I play uh, scrims anyway. And, you know, I kind of get a ladder from uh, playing professional, like watching Young Dota. Because they have rankings and Gosa Gamer and stuff like that, they have rankings. So I kind of have that already, I guess. But I wish there was one because it's it's a good way to get noticed as a as a pub player, so you can get into a professional scene. That will be in the video. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell tell people who we are blinking. Misaki, he's the most handsome guy in the team, and I like flirting with him. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I think not only you, right? Yeah, I mean, he gets all the girls, but he's taken, so it kind of sucks. But, you know, he kind of goes with other girls anyway. Don't tell his girlfriend that. Of course, so no one will tell. No one will know. Would you like to stay in the United States and live here? Uh, no, I don't think so. I... Uh, I like Sweden. I mean, I've been there my entire life. It's the country for me, I guess. I'm so used to it. And it's nice to be... Uh, like, I live in a small town. It's really nice. What can you say about Dota casters? What's your favorite? And do you think currently casting is on a high level in Dota? Or there is a place to grow? Uh, there's a place to grow. I think uh, there's not many top casters, I don't think. But from the English ones, I, I really like Toby. Uh, especially if he has a... Uh, co-caster that works well with him and I also like, uh, well I like every caster that's here really I think they're all great The last questions will be like personal, very short so what's your favorite movie? Mm, Troll 2 uh, Favorite music genre? Uh, Hip hop Game but not Dota favorite. Uh, Dungeon Keeper Country? Uh, Sweden uh, food? Potatoes. Yeah, you, you have kind of crazy taste, but... <laughs> uh, animal? Uh, dogs. And like a hobby or something you do in spare time, like what you like? Dota 2. <laughs> and the very last question, because we are sponsored by uh, WePlay and they are providing like bets. So the question is about the betting in Dota. Have you ever done that? And what do you think about betting in general? Well, I uh, I have bet before, but uh, I put in like uh, fifty dollars, and uh, it grew pretty good. But then I lost everything. So I it was a long time ago. But I I, I think it's fine to bet as long as you don't bet on your own matches. 
I think this scandal uh, with uh, Solo kind of hurt it a lot. So that you, it's kind of bad to bet at all now. It's like, uh, I don't know, people don't like when pro players bet anymore. I, I don't mind though. If you want to do it, do it. As long as you don't bet on your own matches. Uh, now that we are finished, you can say shout outs to anyone else. And by the way, describe why you're holding this plush toy. Uh, it's because I love it. I got it from my boss. So shout out to Alex Garfield. Um, shout out to our sponsors as well XMG, Racer, and Monster. And uh, shout out to my team for uh, helping uh, us go undefeated, even when I'm feeding some games, and to all the fans supporting us. Loglu, Jola Trek is Ukraine. Nice, thank you. Basiba. <laughs> Basiba.